What's up y'all it's your girl Jaleesa Buck and I am here with my very first personal video on my channel I did deal with some um, doubts about about sharing this simply because um, I knew people would come against me I know people will have something to say and people will be offended by what I'm saying but I have to say it because it is what God is telling me to do so excuse Chloe in the background, she's just doing her own thing, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, okay, so what I want to share with you all is my testimony of deliverance, being delivered from um, witchcraft as well as spiritual warfare that was going on due to the witchcraft that I had unknowingly tapped into um, before I actually started to take my walk with Christ seriously. So real quick, I'm just gonna go back and just give you all kind of like a backstory about my life. So first and foremost, um, I've always been a Christian. I've always been um, raised in the church. I've always, I grew up with two parents who were both believers in Christ. And um, so, it's not that I don't know the Lord and that I have never known the Lord. Over the course of my life and going into adulthood, I found myself distanced from Christ. I found that I started to lose faith and I started to feel like, really, I can do all of this on my own. Um, of course, because of a lot of different things that were going on in my life, but ultimately, I just turned my back on God, is what I would say. And so, in that journey of me trying to do things on my own, what happened was I got introduced to the new age religion stuff. And I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know that that's what I was partaking in. I just felt like that was the time for me uh, to focus on me, right? And my strengths, because I had, I had to overcome a lot of depression. I had to overcome a lot of self-doubt and things like that um, from you know the trauma that I dealt with in my childhood and leading into my early adult life and so I felt like I wasn't giving myself enough credit so I had to build myself up and that was the decision that I chose to make um, now in that time of me tapping into those types of things what I realized is that I found um, an attraction to manifesting um, setting my sights on things that I wanted to happen um, and trying to make it happen with my own power as well as almost like thinking myself into the things that I really wanted in life, which I found out later was not of God. And so um, that was number one. Number two, I started to listen to a lot of motivational things that were not that were not of God. A lot of motivational things, which is very easy sometimes if your spirit is not strengthened, it is easy for you to fall into these types of things. And so I started to listen to different type, and I'm not gonna name any names, but I started listening to things that were almost glorifying or self-glorifying um, and really looking at myself like I was my own God, okay? The devil also started to, um, distort the um, the word of God as I knew it to be true, um, where I took the scripture, um, ye are gods, which is what it says in the Bible. I took that into, into a context that told me that I was actually um, a God, okay? And so I started to literally um, look at my life like like I was in charge and that it doesn't matter what anybody else says that's just what I'm gonna do um, I'm trying to make this quick but slowly I started to drift away into um, other things such as yoga okay now this is where I think a lot of people might get offended but again I don't care about that because this is what needs to be said 
All right. So if you are a Christian, I would um, highly recommend that you number one, research what yoga is about, where it derives from um, and what it is all about. I started to tap into yoga um, very, very strongly. I mean, that spirit, whatever that spirit is, started to really um, change the way that I operated. It started to make me feel like I wanted to, number one, be a part of community, a part of a yoga community. Now, as I started to get deeper and deeper into it, because when I walked into it, it was for it was for stretching, it was for exercise, it was to make my body feel better because I had ultimately had a lot of injuries and um, pain in my body at the time. And so um, I looked at it as a way for me to stretch and feel better physically, but then I found out that what I was doing was actually worshiping idols, okay? So um, if you look back into the history and where it came from, you will find that there's a lot of history of Hinduism as well as Buddhism included in yoga, um, even with the bowing and the spiritual connections and all of these different things. And so while I thought that was something that was um, okay at the time, what I didn't realize is that it was opening me up to other demonic um, spirits. Other things started to attach themselves to my life, other, other influences demonic influences started to connect with me and different things in my life started to happen number one my marriage started to suffer and at the time i couldn't understand it until i was delivered from these things and god really showed me what i was exposed to um i didn't really understand what i was doing at the time um things started to happen in my marriage it just wasn't it just it just it was just weird okay a lot of weird stuff happening um not to mention um i really was rebellious um at that time as well and i would just make moves based on what i thought was the best thing for me to do at the time um but a lot of these things i thought were led by god but they were not led by god it was the spirits that were the 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 opposition okay the the demonic spirits um, of witchcraft and sorcery that were controlling the things that I was doing and deceiving me to think that these things that I was hearing was coming from God. Um, as time went on, I started to get more indulged in the yoga community. I started to want to even get my yoga instructor license. It was getting deep. I started to want to actually start a yoga studio. Um, I was going to yoga, um, practicing yoga and bowing and saying these words that they say, which I will not say, but, um, you know, doing these poses that, and ultimately just worshiping other gods um, that at the moment I didn't know what I was doing. Did I feel convicted? Absolutely not. At that time, no, I didn't because the Holy Spirit was just not with me, um, mainly because I was not accepting of the Holy Spirit. And so um, I still do believe that God will stay with you. He will, he will, um, you will never get far enough where you will completely lose yourself when you are called to higher and you are called to greater. But um, nonetheless, um, as I fast forward into maybe a few years after this, um, me getting involved in yoga, um, I moved. I moved to Florida and uh, inside of this um, crazy place that I was at, um, I suffered some, some very high high levels of anxiety and depression. That, those were like the main two things that were just going back and forth. As soon as I got over the depression, I was highly anxious. And then it, it just kept going back and forth, back and forth um, to the point where I was just not even able to sleep at night. Um, some nights I would just stay up until the next day and never, never get an hour of sleep. Um, and this was constant. I also, the devil also played tricks on me and made me believe that I was ill for over a year with a disease that would not go away. Um, and no matter how many tests I got, no matter how many times I went to the doctor, I was convinced, the enemy convinced me that I was ill. Um, and that also played a huge part in my anxiety. There was no peace in my life because I did not have the spirit of God at that time. Fast forward into um, me getting involved with someone who I couldn't see. Had I had the Spirit of God dwelling in me at the time, I would have been able to discern what this was. But a woman came to me that I met 
and she told me, Jaleesa, you have a lot of things happening in your life. Um, it's like a dark cloud is following you. Do you agree? And I did agree. I said, yeah, but I just don't understand what it is, what it's about and how to get rid of it. She told me, you need to do something called a spiritual bath. So at that moment, I didn't know what that was. And I decided, okay, tell me more. She then proceeds to go into telling me that she has a message for me and that she wants to give me something called a reading. And at the time, I didn't really understand what she meant by a reading. And then she started to do the reading on me without my consent. She started telling me things about my life that were just um, accurate, that sound right. But again, because I was just so far away, I had absolutely no idea what I was getting into. Um, she then started to talk about things that um, were happen that happened in my past, and I figured, how could she know these things? I've never spoke to her about these things. I come to find out that this woman was a part of a religion called Santeria, and at the time, I didn't understand what that means or what the or the severity of what that really meant. Um, it is a form of witchcraft. It is a form of sorcery of they use tarot cards, they use um, readings to uh, tap into the spiritual realm. Of course, not the, not the Holy Spirit, um, but they use, um, they, they pray to saints. They, you know, they do all of these different things that are not in alignment with the Christian life, not in alignment with what I had been raised to do. And so when she presented me this spiritual bath, I did accept the things that she gave me. Uh, the things were a bottle of something called Florida water. I don't even know to this day what it is. She gave me two little containers that looked like to be uh, some type of chalk and also a tall candle. And she told me to take the bath. She told me to take the chalk and write two crosses on the bottom of my feet. Um, she also told me to clean my house with these, with this water, this Florida water, um, and also to take a bath with it, light the candles and say a prayer. Also to uh, pour the water over my husband's head as well. And literally to me, it just sounded like a ritual. So it scared me because that, because now, even though I've been far away from God, I still know God. I still know the truth, even though I haven't been accepting or walking in it. And so um, days went by and I and she kept bothering me about it. Hey, did you take the bath? Did you take the bath? And I was just like, sis, no, not yet. I haven't got around to it, you know. And just really, um, really at the end of the day, I was, um, I was skeptical. And so I just kept pushing it off. Uh, I just knew something wasn't right. Um, I left it in the trunk of my car for a few days and um, one final day, she calls me on the phone and we're on the phone talking and she starts to do another reading on me over the phone. Um, one, again, outside of my consent, not telling me what she was doing, but it was evident after a while. And yet I still kept listening to what she was saying. Uh, my phone was on, wasn't on speaker, but she was speaking pretty loudly. And my husband actually heard some of what she was saying. And so as he could tune in and hear the things that she was saying, you know, he wasn't eavesdropping, but he did catch some of the stuff she was saying. And he asked me after the phone call, what was that about? Um, because the way she was speaking was almost like she was speaking as if something had already happened in my life. It was like a manifestation almost. Um, and as she was speaking, it sounded as if it had already come to pass. So my husband was like, what is she talking about? Who is that? And what is she talking about? So I proceeded to explain to him what she was saying, but I also defended it. I also defended her and the things that she was saying was not in alignment with what I should be doing as a married woman. It also went against the covenant between me and my husband. And so, um, but I defended her and I defended what she said and I was accepting of what she was saying and I was just ready and willing and whatever spirit was on me at that time was really strong on me and, and caused division between my household, in my household between me and my husband simply because I was siding with the side of the enemy. Um, and I had no, absolutely no idea. But then my husband spoke life and he said to me you need to get rid of these things that are that she has given you 
these this the spiritual bath thing he said i don't know what that is but have you lost your mind you need to remove this stuff from the house you need to uh pray you need to repent you need to get right because this is not in alignment with god's will for your life literally those simple things and those simple words that may have not really meant anything meant so much to me and it was almost like an eye-opening moment where for so many years i had just continued to walk on this journey of trying to find the answers for myself but god used my husband to stop the enemy from ruining and destroying me from ruining my life um literally as i hung up the phone with that that girl and my husband spoke these words to me i felt an entire rush of heat here on the back of my neck in this on this side specifically um it was like my neck was on fire and i could not for the life of me understand what was going on and why this happened but my whole entire body just experienced some sort of physical sensation that was just out of this world supernatural it had to be the spirit of god i have to say that it was the holy spirit because from that moment my entire life shifted my entire mindset shifted the way that i looked i realized that i had been under some sort of spell almost like curse almost like that i was not even able to see what god really had for me in my life um, from that moment, I started to repent. After a year of not going to church, I started to go to church faithfully. I started to read my Bible. I started to seek the face of the Lord. Um, God literally started to deliver me from these things. These strongholds started to break off. My life started to shift in ways that I could not imagine. I started to get closer and closer and almost, almost like I needed God every single day. God put another woman in my life after this and she was a woman of God. She was a Christian woman and she spoke life into me and she told me what she seen about me in the in the spirit. She told me that there was a light in me and God sent this woman in my life to help me to continue to move forward after breaking free from this demonic force that was on my life trying to trying to ruin my entire mission that god gave me trying to ruin the entire plan and purpose that god had on my life and so the reason why i'm coming here with this message is because some of you are stuck in a place where you're thinking that god has forgotten about you but he hasn't forgotten you 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 feel like you cannot move forward in the things that God has called you to do because there's a block. There's something stopping you. There's probably something like a spirit that is stopping you that you don't even see in the in the human form. You don't even see in the natural. There are things that are going on in the supernatural that are intended. The enemy's assignment is to get you to stop working in God's purpose for your life. The enemy is a sign. There, there is a spirit of there's a spirit that is assigned to you in your mission to stop you from doing the things that God has purposed you to do in your life. And sometimes we tap into things that we don't even understand that stop us from moving into what God has called us to do. Understand me, understand me that you, if you are watching this video up until this point, I can probably guarantee that you can feel where I'm coming from and that you probably experienced something similar to what I am talking about here. I want you to know that there is redemption in Christ. There is a way for you to move forward and be forgiven. The Lord is telling me that you need to repent. Number one, repent and turn away from whatever it is that has you bound right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that demon to loose you in the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray that your strength is redeemed. I pray that the Lord and the strength of the Lord moves through you and that the Lord gives you the power for you to be able to overcome the stronghold, these demonic pressures and demonic influences that are on your life because the Bible tells us that we have the authority God gives us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and that nothing shall harm you. Nothing will harm you in the name of Jesus. You have the power. You have the authority through Christ who strengthens you. And if you just surrender, surrender your will 
for God's will in your life. Let the Lord take over and take you to the next phase in your life that he needs you to go because we are not here for our own purposes. We are not here to do the work that we think we are supposed to do, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. It is the Lord's purpose that we are here to do. And so I just ask you to repent, get on your knees and pray, fast and pray, get that thing off of you, cast out these demonic influences and forces that are that are surrounding you that are encamping around you okay because these things the enemy is here to kill steal and destroy if it is not the holy spirit it is not of god if it is a spirit of anything other than the holy spirit of the spirit of the living god it is not godly it is not here to it is not here to help you but it is here to harm you it is deceptive it is a way for you to lose your soul to the enemy and i'm telling you right now sis bro whoever you are watching this video i need you to repent and i need you to turn away from your sin and seek the face of the lord because in all things he will make things perfect in your life if you seek him seek and ye shall find because you will find your strength in the lord okay i understand that sometimes it can be scary it can be hard especially when there's cultural things that are going on around you especially when you come from a family of this of this type of, of witchcraft especially when you come from a, a an, an environment where you have friends who participate in these things but i'm telling you you are set apart i'm telling you that god has more for you i'm telling you that you can break these cycles you can break these cycles of depression you can break these cycles of anxiety you can break these cycles of misery and pain and, and you can break these you can break these cycles by just calling on the name of jesus okay in the name of jesus right now i command that devil to loose you in the name of jesus i I command that enemy to get rid of all of the the spells and the and the curses that he has on your life because they will not prevail in the kingdom of God because with God all things are possible and God is love and what the enemy is doing to you is not out of love and so I just ask you to repent thank you Jesus I just thank God for you if you're watching this video you have purpose there is something for you to do out here. There is something that God needs from you. And I impel you to seek him and walk in what he has called you to do. There's victory. The Lord says he's already overcome the world. He has already overcame the world. It's just now your job to walk in purpose. Walk in what he has promised. It's all going to work out in your favor. Because all things, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Okay? So I love you and I hope that this video helped you. God bless you. See you later.